we're live. Y'all are on the air. Well, it got quiet when I said that. That's the way I feel about it sometimes. Hello. Good to see you. Glad you made it tonight. Good to see you too, Brother Paul. <laughs> if I have to beg it out of you, I don't want it, all right? If you're going to be that way. Huh? It got quiet, Marianne. <laughs> All right. Uh, remember, this coming Sunday, we're going to have Potluck Fellowship Lunch. Yeah. Amen. It's time to get Ron Chambliss fattened back up again. She, she promised him first serving. If he eats it all, he's going to live to regret it. I can tell you that. <laughs> A week from Saturday is the Easter egg hunt, and then Easter is one week from this Sunday. I know, I think Joel's got all that stuff. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <clears throat> the 11th, Kendra Barnett will be with us. She got in from Romania. Uh, was it first part of the week or over the weekend? Anyway, so those are the major announcements. We now have the drain fixed on the baptistry so we could get that thing cleaned up and get ready to dump people. I want to remind you all that on Easter Sunday we will be doing dedications of babies and we didn't get to do that last year because of COVID. And so we'll do that and we're going to do one special one this Sunday for a complete family who won't be able to be here Easter Sunday. So that'll be a good thing to be able to do that again. Any other announcements? Next Wednesday night, a Wanda Club will start back. The meal will be at 545. It's a dollar a head if you want to come and eat. And then uh, our Bible study will start at 630 as we try to every time. All right. Uh, get a copy of your prayer list out. I have not updated my prayer list this week. But I do know some people. I've heard from some people. So I can... Uh, I can tell you who I know about. And if you know of someone we need to update or add or take off the prayer list, you can do that. Uh, anybody heard a report? I haven't heard from anyone about Brother Dennis Taylor. Anybody heard? He had a bicycle wreck and broke a hip. And uh, he had to have surgery on it, but I haven't heard anything since then. Yeah. Is that right? My goodness. Wheelchair for, for several months. Keep praying for Miss Marilyn Campbell. She's having some pain issues in her back, as as well as Miss Joyce Green, and they're going to try to see what the cause is and what the cure will be. I appreciate you praying for my uncle Clarence Wilson. He uh, is doing better. Uh, he came home from the hospital, non-ambulatory, but uh, there's... There, things are looking up, all right? Keep praying for Charlie and Willene. Uh, Ron, good to see you again, sir. Keep praying for Ron to put some weight on. I like not to know him when I saw him Sunday. You know, uh, I, I think I, I, I'm going to be able to be very good and all that. Back. I'm going to be very good. I'm glad you said it. Yeah. 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 You did. You did that to yourself, brother. Yeah, Mary Brown made him his own big pot of okra, and now since he said he's not in any hurry to put the weight back on, we can bring you some yogurt, there you go. some yeah. tofu, I don't know what else. Quiche. <laughs> there was a pot going around. <laughs> What day you were going to kick off? <laughs> okay, 2,000. We better have a big crowd. All right, we're going to have lots of Easter eggs for the egg hunt. Uh, keep praying for Angie. Pray she doesn't have to have another surgery. 
Our grandson Krieger, who sang for us Sunday, is facing potential surgery, and we're praying that they'll be able to do this non-invasively. So if you think about him, pray for him, as well as the, the boy's dad, Kirk. He's got uh, some disc problems in his neck, and they're looking at major surgery to, to, to fix it. Uh, so you pray for, pray for them. Uh, keep praying for Brother John Hoosier. Uh, Joe Nell and Austin Crawley, I mentioned Miss Joyce, uh, Janine Woodward, I haven't heard a report from her recently, but last time she was doing really well, she got the results back of the recent PET scan and the doctor said they were amazed, things were looking good. Uh, keep praying for Jessica Thurman, uh, Megan Bailey. We have uh, friends from Rogers, uh, Becky used to go to church with them. Shannon Jernigan, her parents were members at Temple, and uh, she and her husband adopted three children, and Monday night, their 18-year-old son got killed in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. So remember the Hollowell family. Hollowell. H-O-L-L-O-W-E-L-L. -L -L -E -L -L. His name was Brandon. Is that right, Becky? Okay, uh, any, any updates from anyone you might know of that I didn't mention? Or any that we've added that I've missed. Yes. I, I asked Sue to take David off. Okay. He's on oxygen, but he don't hurt anywhere except his neck. Okay. He can walk around and everything. Okay. Uh, he does pretty good. They'll take him to drive with someone else. Well, good deal. That'll help him to get out and about. Uh, Daniel, uh, Danny Pinkerton, uh, had to have surgery early in the week. Sent him home because he wanted to. Danielle said he shouldn't have come home, but he did. So now she's nursing him. And she told us he's going to wish he'd stayed in the hospital. <laughs> so Becky sent her a picture on Facebook of Nurse Ratchet. If you know who that is, you're, not, you're, you're too young, all right? But anyway. But, uh, yeah, pray for, pray for Danny Pinkerton. Yeah. I think you can take our friend John Meredith off, Sue. He's right under Chase and Savannah. I tried to call Scott Ramsey today, didn't get an answer. He could be fishing. You know, I don't think shingles keeps you from fishing. But you never know. Who else? Anybody we need to add? Oh. Uh, uh, Allie Parker's, <laughs> yeah. Stan Benefield. Thank you, Sue. Anyone else? Yeah. Tragic. Tragic, tragic thing. It's twice in two weeks. Once in Atlanta and now in Boulder, Colorado. Wow. So God, God. Yeah. Don't understand it, but it'll be the gun's fault. I mean, you can mark that down. It'll be the fault of the gun because he had an assault rifle. Don't get me started. Did he? Yeah. I, I haven't been on Facebook today, so yeah, we were praying for Dakota Lee and mentioned him Sunday, but but he did lose sight in that one eye. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I don't trust her sometimes. She's sneaky, y'all. I'm talking about my wife, for those of you watching on Facebook Live, and I failed to welcome you all. See several watching. It'll be a great night, hopefully. <laughs> Anything else? Well, in a moment, we're going to open the Bible back to Romans chapter 4. And we're going to have prayer on behalf of these we mentioned. Pray for safe journeys for those of our church family who are traveling. We have some unspoken prayer requests for church family and friends of church family and family of church family. 
and uh, can't say, but the Lord knows. If all minds are clear, let's pray for these we mentioned tonight. And I'm going to ask Brother Ed, if he will, to lead our prayer, please. Amen. We had the boys, of course, over the weekend. Ben's an amener. I don't care what you say. It's amen. <laughs> amen. He said amen. <laughs> we enjoyed them. We, we had, see, we saw them in February of last year, right before COVID hit, and then we got to see them when they were baptized in February, but. Anyway, they're growing older. Romans chapter 4. Everybody get a copy of the notes? If you look at the title, I'm just going to go ahead and read it, and then I'm going to read part of that first paragraph that's in your notes and in my notes. What Paul taught about Abraham and circumcision. You know, there are some subjects and words in the Bible that makes a preacher as well as the people who are listening uncomfortable. And no matter how you deal with it, and when you bring up the word circumcision, it's one of those words. And I know there are probably some people who will have difficulty listening because of that. And if it's uncomfortable for you, someone is listening on Facebook Live, it's uncomfortable for me too, all right? But since it's in the Bible, it's something that we need to cover. And we're not going to skip it because it's in the book of Romans. God talks a lot about this subject in the Bible. And if it's important to God relative to the nation of Israel, it ought to be important to us as well. So uh, the issue Paul is dealing with, and remember, we start off in chapter 4 and he's talking to the Jews. He's trying to get them to come to the realization that they're no better spiritually than the Gentiles. Just because they had the law, all right, didn't make them better than the Gentiles. And Paul brings it out because they couldn't keep the law either, all right? And then, and then he's going to teach later on in Romans what the real purpose of the law was. And he alluded to it in chapter 2 and 3 as we went through that. So now he, he's entered into, in chapter 4, this discussion about Father Abraham. And last time we said one of the reasons he... He called out Abraham or singled out Abraham in his writings because it got their attention. When they talked about Father Abraham, if Father Abraham was mentioned to, to a Jewish, a devout Jewish person, people hushed and they listened because he was the father of the nation. God made a covenant promise with Abraham that, that through his seed, every nation in the world would be blessed and he would form a nation from him even before he had children naturally through his wife Sarah so he's going to take this subject about Abraham and he's going to carry it even further dealing with the subject of circumcision so the verses we're going to try to cover tonight and I've got three or four pages of note I just kind of condense you all down to one page of an outline and if you have a comment don't don't feel Feel free to interrupt me, all right? Because I appreciate your feedback. So Romans 4, verses 9 through 12. Let me start off with verse 8 because it leads right into 9. Blessed is the man to the person, all right? In the King James, they use the male gender. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. 
Impute is an accounting term. It's a, it's a mathematical term, and it means to apply to the account. But because of Jesus' righteousness imputed to us, our sins are not imputed to us. Are you there? So verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? So he's called out Abraham as an example. And then he says, God does not impute sin and that person is blessed. Is he said, is it only the circumcision or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. We've been talking about that verse, chapter 4, verse uh, uh, where is it? Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. It was counting him for righteousness. Genesis 15. Romans. I didn't think I would forget it. Put it on my phone. But I can't take my phone off Facebook Live. Galatians. And one other place. I'll look that up and I'll write it down next time. Take, instead of taking a screenshot of it. James 2.23. And Galatians somewhere. All right, thank you all for your help. I appreciate that. If you didn't hear that, ask them and they can tell you after we get through, all right? So, he says, does this blessing only come upon the uncircumcision or the circumcision or, or upon all? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness, all right? To receive righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was circumcised? Was it, was it in circumcision or was it in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, the faith which he had being uncircumcised. And I'll explain that to you as we go along in a moment. But that he might be the father of all them that believe, Though they're not of the circumcision, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision, to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had before he was circumcised. All right? How many times did I say that word as we read those, those verses, 9 through 12? Well... I want, to, I want to just give us a sense of understanding about circumcision. Our problem with understanding this surgery that was performed on, on Jewish males, and it was instituted with Abraham, all right? And, and it is still, in a lot of cases, and I might say probably most cases, performed on male babies uh, at about eight days of age. And I could go into a... A real lesson about that, but it doesn't have anything to do with this, so we'll make that for another time. In our culture, and in our world today, it is a medical procedure that is done for hygienic purposes. But that wasn't at all why circumcision was instituted with Abraham and the Jews that would, would come through his line. It was a sacred ceremony... That marked out as a, a man as a son of the covenant. Alright? This was the sign, one of the signs of God's covenant with Abraham. Now, he talked about Abraham receiving faith before he was circumcised. After he was circumcised, he doesn't answer, but we're going to answer this. Alright? William Barclay was a great commentator. And, and let me tell you what he said. To a Jew... A man who was not circumcised was, quite literally, not a Jew. No matter what his parentage was. If he'd been born in an Israelite family, but he had never gone through this rite of circumcision, it didn't make any difference, alright? So he goes on to quote an ancient Jewish prayer, and I'll read it to you. Blessed is he who sanctified his beloved from the womb, and put his ordinance... Upon his flesh and sealed his offspring by the sign of the covenant. It was part of a Jewish tradition written in their historical uh, writings. So that was, that was for the Jews. Now, 
And, and, and I got this from, from, from my studies and preparation, and, and I, I wasn't even aware of this. If a Gentile wanted to convert to Judaism, he had to do three things. He had to be baptized, and it wasn't like Christian baptism as we knew it. And if you're not aware of it, there were washings, ceremonial washings, in the Old Testament times. Most of them relative to the Jews, all right? So they'd have to be baptized. Then they would have to come to the priest and offer a sacrifice. And then that Gentile would have to be circumcised. So the point I want you to get from this to the Jews, it was more than a ceremony. It was more than just a ritual. It was a point into a living and true relationship with God. They thought because Abraham was their father and they were of the circumcision that it made them special, especially beyond all Gentiles. So you get that so far? All right, let's go on. Unless anybody's got a comment. It'd be a good time to comment because I'm going to get a drink of water real quick. All right. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So the second question, why did God establish this sign for his chosen people? And there are some good answers to that, and uh, I want to cover them with you tonight. Circumcision, I can't hardly say that word, served as a private reminder to the man. All right? Although few other people would ever see him unclothed and recognize that mark on his body that man would recognize that and see that every time he undressed no matter where a jew went no matter how far he traveled from jerusalem he had a private and personal reminder that he was god's man first and foremost so it was a private reminder to a Jewish male, all right? The second thing we know is that it, it left that permanent mark on the body. Once a Jewish male was circumcised, he couldn't be uncircumcised. There's no, no way to go back and, and redo that. So once done, it, 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 it was a mark that lasted forever in his lifetime. So, so it served as a reminder of who he was and his relationship to God. We, we don't get that. We don't even, I mean, I read these things, I wrote them down in my notes, and I said, you know, it, it's not for us. And then the answer came, because it's not for us, okay? And then it powerfully marked this person, and let me, let me tell you why, all right? It reminded him of his spiritual obligations. I read this as one illustration and I copied it into my notes and I'll just read it to you. Suppose a, suppose a Jewish man was about to commit adultery with a pagan woman. Even in that act, the mark of circumcision would remind him of whose he was and to whom he belonged. So, so it was a great reminder, all right? So, do you think that most the Jews or even Jews today do they think of it in this form? I would I, I would assume so. Those that that practice Judaism, you know, I would imagine so. Because they're they're very much in tune with that. Right. So, Those rituals, the law, yeah. right. Right. So I guess we could sum all this up by saying it was God's way of reminding them that they were his people. Okay? So seen in the light, verse 9, the first part, cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? 
And if that's all that was in that verse, we'd have to say absolutely, yes, that's what that, that is true. I'm told, I've never verified this by looking in Jewish historical writings, and there's a man by the name of Josephus who wrote in the first century, and he corroborates a lot of what we find in the New Testament, a lot of what we know definitely beyond the Bible. It was true about Jesus and the apostles and the early church you read about in, in, in the works of Josephus. But I'm told that a Jewish male would get up every morning and he would say a prayer. And as a part of his prayer, he would say, I thank you. Jehovah, that I was not born a Gentile. I thank you that I was not born a woman. I thank you that I was born a Jew. Now, in that culture, they did not value womanhood as highly as they should have. All right? But to be a Jewish male set apart unto God meant something to them. All right? So... Seen in that light, verse 9a, Paul says, is this for the circumcision only? They'd say, then must a person be circumcised in order to be saved. And that's where Paul's getting, okay? That's where he's getting with all this. But Paul, they would say, yes. Yes, they have to be circumcised in order to be saved. But Paul's about to show them, no way. Absolutely not, all right? So, the rest of verse 9 and then into verse 11... Remember the context. He started it in verse 3. All about Abraham and the great question. How was Abraham saved? What shall we say? Verse 1. Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found. If he were justified by works. He hath whereof the glory but not before God. But what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. It was counted to him for righteousness. So Paul is already established and we've talked about it. That Abraham was saved by faith. Abraham believed God. And it was counted. In another place it says imputed. It was accounted to him. It was put on his account for righteousness. But they would say. The Jews would say. But since Abraham was circumcised. Then does not that prove that, that the act of circumcision. Was also necessary for his salvation. Well, here's Paul's answer, all right? I, I want to read this to you again, all right? The last part of verse number 9. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. By the way, he just said what he said in verse 3 again there, okay? <clears throat> How was it then reckoned? Was he in circumcision? Well, had he been circumcised or had he not been circumcised? Not in circumcision, but while he was uncircumcised. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, still uncircumcised. That he might become the father of all them that believe, even those that are not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and I love that statement, all right? So he didn't get circumcised and then start. Uh, yeah. Believing, right? let, me, let me show it to you, all right? Genesis 15, 6. That's where, that's where the Lord reaffirmed the promise to him again. And, it, and, and Abraham was 85 years old. And it was there that the Bible says, first time. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, you can turn over there. I'll just tell you about it, all right? Fourteen years later, Abraham was 99 years old. Genesis 17, 24, Abraham was circumcised. Fourteen years, if you don't mind me saying it this way, after his circumcision. 14 years, I mean, 14 years after he believed God, then came the circumcision. I said it right there, sorry, all right? After his salvation, 
So was circumcision necessary for Abraham's salvation? Not according to the word. Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. So if, if it didn't provide salvation to Abraham, what did? What was the point of it? Well, we, we talked about it personally to the Jews. So let me just kind of break it down for us. All right. It was a sign. It was a sign. Becky and I traveled back to Conway, actually went into Little Rock, left the kids off with their mother, started back. Due to construction on Interstate 40, I said, I'm not driving that road again because I was mad when I got home. So we just cut up and went through Harrison. We drove up 65, but I couldn't remember how to find Highway 65 coming into Conway. Because 64 and 65 converged together at one spot. And back in the old days... They came right there. There was a point in Tommy's restaurant. It used to be sitting right across there. And it was a good place to eat. But it's gone now, all right? But any old truck driver can tell you about that one because a lot of truckers stopped there. So when we were coming back into Conway, we started looking for signs. And we finally came to this sign that said 65 toward Harrison, exit 65A, was it, Becky? I think it was 65A, whatever it was. But anyway, if a sign says that it's two miles down the road... Toward Harrison, the sign doesn't mean it's Harrison. It points the way to Harrison. And you know, if I'd exited and said, well, look at there, we're at Harrison. Then we could have said the sign didn't lie, but the sign didn't lie because it didn't say Harrison. It only pointed the way. It didn't mean the sign didn't have any value. It didn't mean we didn't need the sign. I needed the sign. It was of great value because it pointed me in the right direction. In the same way, circumcision was a sign that was given to the Jews, a physical sign that pointed them to God. It was a divine reminder, we said this already, of who they were, that they belonged to God, and they were special recipients of His blessings. But it was also a seal to them. It was a seal that authenticated the reality of, of their relationship with God. Uh, we have a great seal of the United States. A passport's not valid unless it has that seal stamped on it. A notary public puts a stamp on something when she witnesses uh, a signature on paper. And that seal means this is the real deal. It's an outward indication of something that transpired, all right? In the same way, that meant to that Jewish male that he was totally dedicated to God. Now, Paul's going to give us a little bit more enlightenment here. And I'm going longer than I did last week. I'm going to try to finish this, all right? The sign or the seal is worthless apart from what it signifies. Many Jews have been circumcised. Watch this. And many church members have been baptized. Who never put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people who are a part of a church. Some church. Probably not a Baptist church. But they went through the necessary steps to become a part of that. But if they didn't have the sign, the seal on them, it's not authenticated. Let me explain it this way real quickly. I wear... A ring on this finger of my left hand. And it's a symbol that I'm married to Becky. Now, if I took it off and put it on this hand, it won't fit there, by the way. People wouldn't say, well, why are you wearing your ring on your right hand? And somebody asked it to a guy in an airplane, why are you wearing your wedding ring on the wrong hand? He said, I married the wrong woman. Well, I don't want anybody to think I married the wrong woman, so I wear mine where it's supposed to be. What if a single man puts on a wedding ring and puts it on the fourth finger of his left hand? Does that mean he's married? No, because it's a sign, it's a seal of a relationship. Okay? So people who go through rituals, we're talking, we're, we're breaking this down into our day, okay? So people who go through rituals, like baptism, whatever else it might be, and that is the only evidence of their relationship with God. And that's what they're putting their faith and trust in. 
as the Jews were circumcision, he found out, like Abraham, circumcision didn't save him. He's already saved. And all the rituals, all the religious rituals and practices in the world, religious ceremonies, if they're not accompanied by an interchange, it comes about with, as a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, they're as worthless as circumcision. Amen. That's the point. That's, that's the point Paul wanted them to get. And the father, verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had before he was ever circumcised. For the Jew can call Abraham father, but so can I. You know, he's going to teach us later on that uh, there were some who were born Jews, there were some that were grafted in. And that's, that's another lesson all of itself, all right? They were what? They were grafted in. Like you grafted. 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 <laughs> Salvation is not a racial issue, your, your lineage, where you're born. It's not a family issue. Just because we're parents and grandparents and we have parents and grandchildren, it doesn't mean they're going to be saved. They have to be saved on their own. <clears throat> Abraham's faith came when he believed God finally. God had been telling him this. He had already got up and left the earth of the Chaldees. And God had made a promise to make a great nation out of you. And they were expecting children. And it didn't happen for years and years and years. Even after they tried it on their own. And I know a lot of people are still trying to be saved on their own. And I'll tell you something. It didn't work for Abraham. And it won't work for us. I like Romans. It may take us two years to get through it, but uh, anyway, I like it. Any comment? Right. He lays that foundation so he can expand on that as we go further into it. Not by works of righteousness, Paul said to Titus, and he's going to bring that out. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you didn't have to start that, did you? So before this... Before Darren has to fight his way out of here. And by the way, if anybody on Facebook Live heard that, ask Darren. I'm not going to repeat it, okay? Let's dismiss. It's good to be here tonight. Thank you for coming, all right? Gerald, would you dismiss us, please?